range of new workplace rules are being proposed to help businesses emerge from the coronavirus lockdown. Ministers have promised specific advice for several types of workplaces, from call centres to factories. Uh, so what do we think it will look like? Well, Sean has been uh, trying to assess this for us this morning. Morning, Sean. Yeah, morning to you, Dan. Morning, Lou. I've realised, Dan, I haven't actually seen you in the office this morning. Somehow we've managed to socially distance. Good morning. For, whether it was deliberate or not, I don't know. But it's all part of the rules, isn't it, one way or another. Loads of people who are going into work at the minute or thinking about when they might go back to work are considering can they do it safely. And the government, you know, workers themselves, all want to be doing that. But under what rules? What's the system going to be? Well, we've managed to see this early draft of proposals that the government's putting forward for the unions who represent workers, for businesses themselves to have a look at. And we can go through a few of those things that may be in place to get people back to work. So this two metre social distancing that we're all so used to now, that may not be required in certain circumstances where it's not possible. The government would maybe want to see additional measures uh, to be looked at, including uh, more hygiene procedures, physical screens, the use of protective equipment as well. Then in terms of how and when are we working, employers being encouraged to stagger working times, stagger those arrival times, the break times, not so much hot, hot desking as we've all been sort of encouraged to do for so many years now. And then those workers who are considered vulnerable. This is a really key one because those who are over 70, pregnant, underlying organ or respiratory problems, those who can't work from home, perhaps in these proposals saying that those people should be put in the safest possible roles. But how easy is that for employers to actually carry out? For some industries, this will be music to their ears. We, I spoke to uh, some bosses last week in the aviation industry. They were saying social distancing just not possible in airports on planes. So they would be happy if this came into place. Uh, the hospitality industry as well. Uh, here's the boss of Fuller's. Who, he's in charge of 400 pubs and restaurants across the UK. And he explained why that two metre rule, if it was in place for him, just would not make his business that viable. You think of the practical problems of going to the loo, being served at the bar, being served a plate of food at your table, and then you align that with the fact that we go to a pub to socially interact with friends. It simply wouldn't be the same having a two metre gap. It would be a very soulless experience. It would mean that our revenue would be down as much as 80%, but our costs would go up. So it's actually potentially more catastrophic for the sector to operate under social distancing guidelines than it is with us being closed down at the moment. So the unions that are representing workers right across different sectors are watching all this very closely, particularly the protective equipment. They're concerned that a lot of businesses don't necessarily have the protective equipment needed if you're going to remove that social distancing rule in some situation. The British Chambers of Commerce wants to see the government give, give more information on what steps are going to be taken to make sure businesses have that equipment in place. Before 8 o'clock, I'm going to be speaking to the boss of Taylor Wimpy, one of our biggest construction home building companies, about what they're doing. They're reopening sites today. Uh, that they hadn't been open for, for a few weeks now. So we're going to hear what they're putting in place and whether they feel some of these changes will help them ramp up even more, because a lot of this is all about getting that economy going as quickly as possible. Oh, Sean, thank you very much, and uh, hopefully we might be able to catch a glimpse of you in the office a little bit later. Thank you. <laughs> I promise I'll come and see you. A little slice of Sean there. Who, <laughs> in fact, that's reminded me, Sean, I've still not come out to say good morning to you. but it's. I have got something. Um, uh, one business has been in contact with us actually this morning. Um, a hairdresser says uh, they've got five salons, they employ 70 people, and yet they cannot see an end to all this. They're worried about um, potentially going back to working two metres apart in the salons of uh, sort of 1,200 square feet. Rotating staff is not possible. We've got rents to pay. We need to be able to function at 80% capacity or we will not survive. He says, not only me, but my entire team are worried and struggling. I I'm sure there are many businesses this morning in exactly the same position, Sean? Well, th that thing about the, the two-metre social distancing, that's potentially where we may see some of those rules relaxed. We're hearing, you know, we've seen these early drafts of proposals from the government about the new way of working for all different sectors, and that is one that may be changed, and but not at the cost of people's safety so there would need to be the right protective equipment in place can businesses like that hairdresser get hold of that can they afford it a customer's got to be confident enough to come back in these are all the things that are being weighed up at the minute by businesses right around the country uh, and the construction sector has been a big one as well a lot of people out and about will have already noticed some construction work continuing one way or another because the government said if it's safe to do so they can do that because they can't work from home and uh, taylor wimpy one of our biggest 
home builders is today reopening some sites, some baby steps towards getting construction properly back underway. And we've got the boss with us, Pete Redfern, uh, who joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. So when I, when I say baby steps, you've got site managers going on, on site on a few of your sites today. But what is it that's stopping you getting your builders on site and getting your building up and running again? So I think baby steps is a good, good description. Um, a few site managers, three or four. And actually, what, what's stopping us, and, I, and I, this is not a complaint, what's stopping us is a stage way of doing the process properly. So, yeah, we expect to have site managers on site this week. They will be setting up sites, putting in place signage, making sure PPE is in place, extending sort of some of the social areas, putting in new pathways to give more passing space. And then slowly from next week, we'll start introducing some of the trade base. But, but I don't want you to take it as a complaint that we're doing it slowly. Nothing's stopping us apart from making sure it's done safely. And you need two things. You need clear rules that we can implement and have the right equipment to do. And you also need the behavioural side. And, and we believe strongly that that's done best by taking those baby steps and taking it a stage at a time. And I, and I think that applies across lots of industries and lots of other circumstances where people will, over the next few months, hope to be going out in public. So the government's put these uh, draft proposals to uh, industries right across the country. Uh, what have you said in response to those? What do you need to see the government saying to get you up and running? I, I think the government's done a good job of starting to consult on these processes. It's not complete. I mean, you know, you've talked already this morning about some of the areas that are difficult, you know, around... PPE and the two metre rule and you know, all of us making sure that we don't steal PPE, for instance, from the NHS. I think those are really difficult questions and there needs to be a good healthy debate. And I think that debate has started and you, know, you see some of it in public today. I think our feedback is clarity. You know, sort of, we, we didn't like, and in construction there'd been sort of a suggestion that you could sort of have a, a small time limit within which you could sort of break the two metre rule. And that, that didn't feel right because it's very, very hard to implement clearly on site. Whereas saying actually, if you've got the right PPE in place, then you can do a job closer than that and it needs to be monitored and watched. That's a process that can be managed and set out clearly and monitored and people can get some confidence from. Mm. So it's not simple. But it's important. And we used, as a construction business, we used to having methods of work for every job that we do. So as long as it's clear, we can work to it. Some, some of the pictures we're seeing there just uh, indicating what, what life was once like and, and what you're trying to get back towards. You mentioned PPE there and the fact that you, you don't want to be stealing uh, equipment from the NHS. But you, you, you're already in the process of getting shields on hard hats, this kind of thing. Do you find that you're competing with the NHS to get that material? No, not, not at all. In fact, quite the opposite. I mean, right at the beginning of this process, right at the first sort of stage of lockdown, we, and actually most of our industry, donated all of our existing stocks to the NHS. About a month ago, we started manufacturing face shields, not for ourselves, but actually for care homes, for GP surgeries, um, and sort of for, for community nurses. And we've supplied now 80 different institutions with that equipment. We're also now manufacturing some construction versions alongside that for ourselves. And we're looking at two other ways in which we personally can manufacture. So that's incremental new supply. And with PPE with the NHS, what we're finding is there are certain things, like actually breathing masks, which are, which are starting to, to come through mm. in decent numbers. There are other areas, and actually particularly what we see with the work we're doing with the NHS and with care homes is scrubs and gloves and you know, sort of aprons and the like. They're, yeah. they're more of a constraint at the moment. So um, we, we, can, we can bring new supply in and just, actually still add to the NHS supply. Just finally, uh, Mr Redfern, so that's the safety of workers. In terms of job security, do you expect that you're not going to be able to give as much work to subcontractors and you might have to lay off staff in the near future? We certainly don't expect to be laying off staff. And, you know, as you may know, we've put a scheme in place to protect some of our subcontractors, a pay it forward scheme that effectively pays them for future work. Over the course of the next month, we won't have anything like a full complement of people on site. And for safety reasons, we think that's right. So absolutely, it won't be returning to normal in terms of the number of subcontractors. But slowly over time, we'll, we'll get there. I think you know, we see a new normal of about 80% of normal levels in about a month's time. Um, but hopefully over the course of the next sort of six months, we'll get back to a, to a more normal state.
Pete Redfern uh, from Taylor Wimpy, thank you very much. Interesting the expectations there, potentially 80% of where they used to be in a month's time, and, and that will be what the kind of figure that bosses around the country will be keeping a close eye on. Yeah, a lot of uncertainty around at the moment. Sean, mm -hmm. thank you for that. I'm um, sure thank you very much. See you a little bit later. Let's catch up on the weather and Matt is